Range, percentiles, and interquartile range, IQR. The mean, median, and mode give an idea of the middle of the data set. But another important feature is the spread or variability of a data set. One reason why this is important is that it helps us to determine the relative standing of a result. For example, suppose you obtain a score of 70% in a test and the class average is 60%. How well did you do besides scoring above the average? If many students achieved above 80%, then a score of 70% is just a little above average. On the other hand, if the highest score in the class is 73%, then 70% is a very good score, very near the top of the class. In the second case, the score of 70% has a much higher rel relative standing than in the first. 20 students in a class sat a maths exam and their ranked scores were 14, 18, 27, 35, 43, 48, 57, 58, 60, 63, 63, 65, 67, 71, 73, 76, 79, 81, 84 and 92. So the lowest score was 14, the highest score was 92 and they are in order from smallest to largest. Part 1. Sarah obtained 71 in this test. What is her percentile ranking? So we can clearly see that 71, Sarah's score, is right here. And counting, we find that 13 students scored less than Sarah in the test. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 students scored less than 71. And remember, there was 20 students in the class altogether who sat the test. Thus, her percentile ranking is 13 over 20 multiplied by 100, which is 65. Hence, Sarah's score is in the 65th percentile. So what we did was we counted how many students scored less than Sarah, which is 13. We put it over the total number of students, which is 20, multiplied by 100. Part 2. What is the 35th percentile, i.e. P35? We need to calculate C, the raw number, which is 35% of the way through the list of 20. So C, the raw number, is going to be 35 over 100 times 20, which is 7. So 35% of 20 is 7. As C is a whole number, the required percentile is the average of the results numbered C and C plus 1, i.e. we require the average of the 7th and 8th results, 57 and 58. So we count along 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So 57 plus 58 divided by 2 gives us 57.5, which is P35, the 35th percentile. So it's the average in between 57 and 58. Part 3. What is the 78th percentile, i.e. P78? Again, calculate C, the raw number. That is 78% of the way through the list. So C, the raw number, is 78 over 100 times 20. So there's 20 students in the class, which is 15.6. So 78% of 20 is 15.6. As this is not a whole number, we round 15.6 up to the nearest whole number. We always round up with percentiles, no matter what is after the decimal. So we round up to the nearest whole number, which is 16. And we take the 16th result, 76. So we count along, and our 16th result is 76. Thus, P78, the 78th percentile, is 76. Summary. If C the raw number, is a whole number, then take the average of that and the next. For example, if C is 9, then we get the 9th and 10th and divide it by 2. If C, the raw number, is a decimal, then we round up. We always, always round up a percentiles to the next whole number. For example, if C is 4.2, then we're looking for the 5th. So 4.2 rounds up to 5.
11 students attempt a test which consists of 50 short multiple choice questions. The number of correct answers they scored is given in the following ordered ranked list. 12, 15, 21, 23, 28, 29, 33, 35, 38, 42 and 45. So 12 was the lowest score and 45 was the highest score. Find the median score, the median or middle score. As there are 11 scores, the middle score is the sixth, i.e. the median is 29. We can clearly see that 29 is in the middle as there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values to the left and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values to the right. Another way to work this out, if we're ever looking for the median, that really means halfway through the list. So we divide by 2, so there's 11 students, so we divide by 2 for the median. And 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. And again, since we have a decimal, we always round up. So we're looking for the sixth value. One, two, three, four, five, six. Part two, find the lower and upper quartiles. Q1, which represents quartile one or the lower quartile, is the same thing as percentile 25. Or the 25th percentile. So C, the raw number, is going to be 25 over 100 times 11, because there's 11 students, which is the same thing as a quarter times 11, which is 2.75. So a quarter of 11 is 2.75. So what we do is we round up to 3. We always round up when we have a decimal for percentiles. We never round down. So we take the third score. So 1, 2, 3. The third score is 21. So Q1, the lower quartile, is 21. For Q3, the upper quartile, this is the same thing as the 75th percentile. The raw number is going to be 75 over 100 times 11, again, because there's 11 students, which is the same thing as 3 quarters times 11, which is 8.25. So 3 quarters of 11 is 8.25, so we round up to 9. We always round up with percentiles. So we take the ninth score. So we count along, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The ninth score is 38, so Q3 the upper quartile is 38. So remember, if C, the raw number, is a whole number, then we take the average of that and the next. For example, if C is 9, then we take the 9th and 10th and divide by 2. And if C, the raw number, is a decimal, then we round up to the next whole number. For example, if C is 4.2, we take the 5th. And this is easy to see why when we have a list of numbers, and especially if we focus in on the median. So remember, 29 was the median. So we can see that from 12 to 29, that was the first half of the data. And if we take half of the first half, so a half of a half is a quarter, we end up at 21. So we have two values to the left of 21 and two values to the right of 21. So this is basically the first quarter. We can see it's the third value. And then the next third value is 29, which is the median. And the next third value was the upper quartile. And again, if we take the top half of the data, so from 29 up to 45, we can see that the upper quartile, 38, we had two values to the right of it and two values to the left of it. So if we ever have a list of numbers, in this case we have 11, we would have to go up in threes. So the third value is going to be the lower quartile. The next third value will be the median and the next third value would be the upper quartile. Now this does not mean that you go up in thirds for every set of numbers. What we would always have to do is, for the lower quartile, take a quarter of the total amount, and for the upper quartile, take three quarters of the total amount, and for the median, we take a half of the total amount. If we have a whole number, we take that number and the next one, add them together and divide by two, and if we have a decimal, we round up. Part 3, calculate the interquartile range. So the IQ or the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 was 38, Q1 was 21, and subtracting, we're left with 17. So the interquartile range was 17. 38 minus 21 is 17.